Hi, everyone. Welcome to the session on building a diverse and inclusive movement with Julia Wise. We'll start with a 10 minute talk by Julia, and then we'll move to a live Q&A where we'll respond to your questions. You can submit your questions in your name or anonymously using the box to the right hand side of the video, which I hope is on this side. Um, I hope you all are pretty familiar with that by now. So I'll be moderating questions as they come in. Just know that it might take a little while for you to see your questions um, before they come up on the screen. You can also vote for your favorite questions to push them higher up the queue. I know we won't be able to address all your questions today on such a broad topic within just this one Q&A, but there are also Slack channels for further discussion after the talk. I may direct some questions there if they seem to require more time than we'll have here. After about 25 minutes, I think, of questions, I'll bring the Q&A to an end, um, but that won't be the end of the session. So to help you think through and apply any ideas you've heard, we'll have a 20 minute icebreaker session. You'll have two speed meetings there with other attendees. Hopefully you've all um, enjoyed those so far, I know I have. I'll explain more about that when we get there if you're not familiar. Lastly, before we begin, I want to share with you that this talk was written several months ago. So this talk focuses on the experiences people have had within the EA community, which we know is a very narrow slice of the issues that people face around the world, and it doesn't address all of the life experiences that we each bring with us or all of the issues that we might care about and that we think of when we think of diversity and inclusiveness. In the United States, where Julia and I live, we're currently grappling with some of these crucial questions about how we might finally reckon with the history of racism that led up to George Floyd's murder and is sparking national and international protests right now. Those are questions that have deeply shaped my career and that I know the two of us care about a lot. So there is a systemic change discussion as well that is in Slack where we will be available to talk more about those issues and have broader discussion with you there. So now I would like to introduce our speaker for this session. Um, I have the pleasure of working with Julia on the community health team at the Center for Effective Altruism. Julia was the original contact person for the Effective Altruism community. That means she helps local and online groups to support their members on questions from diversity to mental health. Her background is in social work. Julia is the president of Giving What We Can and writes about effective altruism at the blog, Giving Gladly. Julia? This talk is about where we want to be as a community, where we are now, how we got here, and how we can do better. So to start with, where do we want to be? Here are some things I expect almost everyone in effective altruism can agree about. We want EA to be a welcoming space for anyone who wants to do good more effectively. That doesn't mean it has to be for everybody. My sister, for example, has no interest in EA, and that's fine. But for those people who do find that EA resonates with them, we want them to feel excited when they find this community and to feel that they belong here. And once people are involved with the community, we want them to have a good experience. Okay, so where are we now? Let's look at who is in the EA community based on the most recent EA survey. About 71% of EAs are male, 27% are female, about 2% are some other gender identity. About half of respondents are in their 20s. And let's look at race. About 87% are white, 10% Asian, 5% as Latin American or Spanish origin, 5% other races, and 1% as black. These are US-based categories, but obviously uh, countries around the world might have different categories. And obviously this is not at all representative of the global population. It's not even representative of many of the areas that EA draws from. So for example, London and the Bay Area are both much more racially diverse than the EA populations in those areas. So how did we get here? What are some reasons that we might see these kinds of demographic slants? Why is EA not already more diverse? I'll start with what you might call founder effect. In biology, that's a term for when a population starts with just a few ancestors, and then you end up with limited genetic diversity as a result. EA was mostly started by young, white, English-speaking men with backgrounds in philosophy, math, and finance. It started with people who knew that they had a lot of privilege and resources and wanted to spread those around. 
If people tend to recruit their friends, and if people's friends are often from similar backgrounds as theirs, we would expect to end up with something very much like what EA looks like right now. And without conscious effort to change that, we will probably stay here, even if that's not what anybody intends. I'll give an example with thanks to Alex Gordon Brown for pointing it out. The mathematician Thomas Schelling made a model of what happens if you take a checkerboard and randomly scatter different colored pieces across it. So here we have our checkerboard. Pieces are randomly scattered around. Now, let's say you give those pieces a small preference for not being uh, outnumbered. Let's say that if a piece is outnumbered in the pieces that surround it more than two to one, it will move to the nearest spot where that's not the case. So if you give the pieces that preference, you very quickly get some pretty stark segregation. And I think it's safe to assume that people also don't prefer to be outnumbered. They might have at least some mild preference for being with people who resemble them. It can be easier or more familiar. So this might be one of the things that's happening. Again, not necessarily with anyone intending it. Now, let's think about who chooses what pro problems uh, to work on. EA emphasizes impartial decisions of what to focus on, choosing where you can have the most impact rather than where you already have a personal connection. I think that if you come from a background where a few major problems or injustices are facing you or the people close to you, it may be easier to make that decision to zoom out and look at the world's problems abstractly. But if you are personally affected by a problem like racism or poverty or anything else, you don't need to zoom out to find an important problem to work on. You have one staring you right in the face. And because you have more knowledge of that problem, your comparative advantage may lie there. Now, let's think about what it's like to be in an environment where you don't feel that you fit in. If you are already from a demographic group that's well represented in EA and you have some unpleasant experience, it might not be a big deal. What I want us to remember is that the slow accumulation of negative experiences means that one more such experience feels different than it does when that experience rarely happens to you. Those bad experiences might come from simple mistakes or from other people's ignorance or from outright discrimination. But one more negative experience on top of that heap might be enough for someone to say, I've had enough, I'm out of here. This doesn't just apply to obvious demographic categories like gender and race. I think it can also apply to people who feel on the outside for other reasons. Older people, parents, people who grew up without a lot of money, people who still don't have a lot of money, people with disabilities or health problems, people who didn't go to a fancy university, people who haven't found some perfect EA job. An EA that is not welcoming to those people is missing out on a lot of potential. Another reason that people might consider EA a bad fit with their life might be the idea that EA has to be the only important thing in your life. I see that especially in people who are taking EA really seriously and going about it in an intense way. That intensity can be very motivating, but it doesn't mean you have to cut everything else out of your life. If any movement is asking you to do that, you should be very worried. When you make important decisions in your life, I hope that you consider your values and make decisions that reflect those values. But we all value things besides optimizing for global welfare. That's the reality of people, how people work, and it is compatible with EA. When I'm with my children, I'm not optimizing for global anything. I'm just trying to be a good parent. You're allowed to care about more than one thing. If we treat EA as incompatible with caring about other things, we're pushing away people who care about addressing problems in their local communities. We're pushing away people who already have things they need to think about, like a family or a health problem, or just people who don't want to have a life that completely resolves or revolves around EA. I've given some reasons why I think EA is more homogenous than it may be. Why is that homogeneity a problem? First, because it reduces our impact. We're not just trying to move money, we're trying to address big problems all over the world. And we can't do that with just a narrow slice of the population. To give one example, a lot of animal welfare organizations recognize the need for animal advocacy in developing countries where animal consumption is on the rise. That work is best done by people who understand the culture and the policies in a country or region. Second, because we care about what people's experience is like. We want people to have more good experiences and fewer bad ones, both in general and in EA in particular. 
we don't want people to feel that they're not valued or included, or that they're only being included for superficial reasons, or that they're isolated from others like themselves. Third, because staying in a narrow demographic locks us in and limits our possibilities. People generally don't enjoy feeling isolated. Having any group seriously underrepresented will make it more likely that talented people bounce off EA because understandably, they don't want to stick around to find out why there are so few people like them. I've outlined some problems, so what steps can we take to make progress? I don't have a quick and simple prescription, but I do have some ideas. I hope that I'll see many of you in the diversity and inclusion Slack channel or the Facebook group after this, and we can try to figure out more. Here are my top suggestions. Try to put yourself in the shoes of someone who's feeling on the outside of VA maybe because of their demographics or their educational background, or just because they're new and don't know the jargon. Think about what might help them feel able to fully participate. That will be different things in different situations, but get curious about what it's like to feel like an outsider. When you notice a problem, don't just leave it to people from underrepresented groups to handle. Men, take action against sexism when you notice it. White people, take action against racism when you notice it. When you're thinking about speakers to invite potential new group organizers or even articles to read or share, take some time to think of people from groups that are underrepresented in EA to ensure that you don't overlook people who are not already in your network. If you're from a group that's underrepresented in EA, consider whether you'd be willing to have a more visible role, maybe by organizing an event in your local group or writing an article in the EA forum. We need you and build each other up and support each other, especially new people. We're all here because we care deeply about making the world a better place. I'm going to close with three requests for you. Be kind and careful with each other when discussing this. People's feelings run very high here, especially right now. I've seen people with very different experiences learn listening earnestly and openly to each other. I think those are the kinds of discussions that can move us all forward. Secondly, my coworker Sky Mayhew is working with advisors right now to explore evidence-based approaches to improving diversity and inclusion in EA. If you have experience in that field, please get in touch with Sky on the Slack channel. And lastly, don't give up. This is not an easy problem, but luckily EA attracts people who are interested in working on hard problems. Thank you. So uh, we're here for the question and answer session. I'm really pleased that Sky could join me uh, because we work together at the Center for Effective Altruism. And a big focus of our work together has been this question of how to help EA be more diverse, more inclusive, more equitable. And Sky's work is actually primarily focused on that right now. So uh, Sky, I know you'll have thoughts on some of these questions too, and I might ask you to chime in. Uh, and I also wanna say just as we begin, you know, of course, Sky and I are both white American women talking about this topic today. Uh, and in many ways, we're not the ones who are primarily affected by many of these problems. Uh, but as we've talked about the importance of not just leaving uh, sort of the burden of dealing with problems of diversity and inclusion uh, to people who have to deal with it all the time, uh, you know, here we are, but we, well, we also know that we certainly don't speak for everyone, that people have a lot of different experiences. Uh, you know, based on their geography, their language, their race, all these other perspectives. Uh, and one thing that Sky and I have both found really helpful uh, is a survey that was done about people's experiences around race and ethnicity uh, in the EA community by Vedahi Agarwala. Uh, so that was posted on the forum last month. Um, we found it really helpful. I know I really thank her and the people who um, shared their experiences through that survey to um, just put, put that out there for people like me to learn from. Yeah, so Sky, why don't you take us to some questions? That's great. Uh, yeah, I'll get to, I see we have some questions coming in. So uh, if you don't mind everyone, I'll kick us off with one. Um, Julia, you mentioned at the end of your talk, the importance of being kind. And uh, you know, I think we both think that this is a value that really helps people have conversations, especially when people are coming from different viewpoints. And you and I have talked about um, and have been reading the, the, an essay about the idea of fragility 
or white fragility in this particular essay, which comes from Robin D'Angelo. I wondered if you wanted to add any thoughts about that. Yeah, I, I think this is, is a topic that we've been talking about. And uh, you know how after you finish a project, you always remember something that you wish you had included in it. So this was a thing that I, I wish I had included. Uh, because that essay is about the way that often white people, when they're being told about the, the facts of racism, that they kind of can't handle it. We can't always handle it. We get defensive or we crumble or we react in some other way that's not helpful. And a way that I'm trying to grow, and I, I think that a lot of white people could stand to grow, is in trying to be brave during those conversations uh, and and learn and hear and be open to the realities of racism. Uh, and that's not easy. Um, it's painful to hear about, but it's more painful to experience. And so I'm trying to remind myself, um, especially in, in times when there's so much pain and, and feelings about what's been going on, uh, to be, try and be brave, try to listen, to educate myself, uh, because if I don't do those things, I can't help make things better. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I know that's an important part, uh, an important thing that many of us are thinking about now. So I wanted to start with the questions and we'll try to have a quick conversation to treat uh, fairly some really big questions some really big topics. And um, that starts with this first question that uh, you and I have been talking about internally. So someone says, I've been disappointed by the EA response to BLM, which Black Lives Matter. I appreciate the systemic change channel and Slack, but could you comment here as well? Yeah, I know that there have been some statements made publicly about support for Black Lives Matter. I remember seeing one from Open Philanthropy Project the other day. CEA put a, a statement on the forum uh, a while ago with some resources that our group's team has been sharing with uh, EA organizers to, as they help try to support their members. I know that there's also like behind the scenes a lot of conversation going on. I know it's been a big topic uh, with my coworkers at the Center for Effective Altruism, and uh, it is something that people have strong feelings about. I think as a as an organization with people from a lot of different countries, we've also, also been thinking about how this um, just resonates differently with people from different countries. I think for Americans in particular, it often really hits home, um, whatever background you're coming from. Uh, there's just a lot of, um, a lot of history there uh, that all Americans are, are part of. And I think for EAs in other countries, it can resonate in different ways. Um, you know, all countries have their own history often involving, um, you know, bad, bad histories around race uh, and oppression. So I think, I know some of the caution that we've been kind of talking about um, within CEA is how do we as Americans talk about the problems going on in America without uh, assuming that our audience is all Americans because they're not, EA is not, um, you know, most EAs are not Americans. And so, so I think it, it just does complicate the conversation and complicate the way that uh, that both individual EAs, that organizations uh, talk and communicate about it within EA. Um, my guess is that a lot of people, particularly in the US, are having that conversation more within their households, within their families, within you know people that they're close to, and they may not have brought that conversation to EA, but I, I do think it's happening. Absolutely, and I've been glad to see some of this discussion happening in the community and on the forum, and I think um, we'll see some resources posted as well, and I'd be happy to see other people sharing resources that have been meaningful for them in those channels as well. Thank you for asking that. So one thing I'll just tag on is, is um, you know, of course, EAs are kind of obsessed with research. And um, so I think we've seen uh, some people wanting to really, I know I, I don't like to make recommendations if I don't have, uh, you know, on topics that I'm not an expert on, uh, or that I don't have anything solid to recommend. Um, so I've been happy to see uh, Chloe Cockburn, who is the program officer on criminal justice reform at Open Philanthropy Project. Um, she's published a list of recommendations. There was a Vox piece about mm -hmm. her and her recommendations about that uh, recently. I know I've seen other people discussing various sources of information about what are evidence-based practices, what are um, ways forward that uh, 
that have some evidence behind them. And of course, in systemic change or any kind of political change, we never have an RCT uh, mm -hmm. that tells us exactly what we should do. Um, but I do think there are uh, ways to learn from the evidence that's out there. Uh, and that yeah, I've seen a lot of interest in that from the A's. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so the next question is, are there any conversational topics or ideological perspectives that you feel are both common in EA and worsen the problem of diversity? I think one is, is this idea that I touched on in the talk is this idea that you have to optimize your whole life around uh, a single goal or something like that, um, that all your efforts can only be in pursuit of uh, this kind of grand utilitarian scheme or something. And like even for utilitarians, which not e all EAs are, um, that's, that's just not how humans work. And mm. I think it erases the fact that both we have personal lives, we care about things that, are, that affect us personally or that, um, that just don't don't relate to causes at all. Um, and also that there are causes we care about that uh, might not make it up to a list of, of prioritized EA causes, but that personally have a lot of meaning to us. And I think just recognizing that EAs are humans and that uh, we care about different things and uh, that there will be things that uh, don't rank well in a spreadsheet, but that do have personal meaning to us and figuring out, I don't think there's an easy answer about what to do about that, but that it has to be part of the discussion. It has to be part of what, what we're considering as we try to make choices. And do you have thoughts about how like the value of impartiality plays into this? And for if you, I don't know how new people are to EA, maybe everybody's familiar with that, but if you had a quick thought on partiality versus impartiality, I've heard some people talk about that in this sort of conversation. I think uh, it's easier to be impartial when you have less personal involvement in something. Um, and, and by impartiality, I just mean, you know, choosing as if you had no relationship to the situation. Uh, and I think there just will be cases where um, you either can't or, or don't want to uh, evaluate a, um, a decision or an area as if you had no relationship to it. Uh, I think there are, I think there are good reasons to do both at different times. Uh, and I, I think the, just a, a big strength of EA is its emphasis on making at least many decisions in an impartial way and trying to just recognize the randomness of how we were all born into different circumstances and it, it could have been different for any of us and that uh even the relationships that we have to a certain uh cause or a certain you know geographic area or anything like that um is all kind of just uh random in its nature um so i'll, I'll stop rambling there yeah thank you the to go to a Broad question, but in a slightly more specific direction, maybe is um, what are some ways that then we can be more welcoming? So if we've identified some things that we think are less welcoming, do you have thoughts about ways we can be more welcoming to minority groups? So I think um, a lot of different things have been tried and, and it's hard to, I, I don't have like really firm, you know, RCT type evidence again, uh, but some of the things that I would recommend, uh, which you can see, there's a post called something like how to make uh, EA groups more welcoming, uh, which I wrote up a couple of years ago. Um, some of these suggestions are kind of collected there. Um, one suggestion I saw was just having hosts who are uh, from different groups. So one uh, person in London noted that uh, they're not white and they uh, have hosted some meetups in London and that they noticed more attendance from people of color. Uh, to those meetups. And so it seemed that that, you know, might have some effect. I know that uh, London has also done some research on what types of events, I, I think they've just collected evidence on um, the gender breakdown of different events. And they've uh, found that some types of events seem to have um, better sort of return. Um, so I think women are more likely to show up for the first, uh, sorry, I'm uh, misparaphrasing this, but um, 
women and men may be equally likely to turn up to a first meetup, but their um, sort of return rates are not as, um, not as women are not as likely to come back. Um, but it, it depends some on the type of event. Uh, so that was some, some useful data. Um, I know that the, I believe it's the EA survey just released some information about where people hear about EA in the first place. And there was, I think there wasn't a difference by race, but there was a difference by gender in terms of uh, where people, sort of how people came into EA or first got involved in EA. Women are more likely to hear about it um, from another person uh, that they know rather than something like a podcast or news article. Um, so I do think there's, there's both some common sense things um, which I've tried to outline in that uh, forum piece, uh, which we can link to in the Slack later, um, but also some, you know, in typical EA style, some things that uh, we have some data about. And I, th I think that can be helpful in noticing patterns that are not always easy to pick up on uh, just by attending events, for example. Thank you. I just caught myself doing something that I think is an example that we cannot do. So I think I read Ryan's question as what are some ways that we can be more welcoming? And Ryan said, what are some ways that EA can be more welcoming? And one thing that Julia and I try to talk about and try to um, be conscious of, like in our writing and our talking, is making sure that we recognize that EA does have and has long had many different people involved. So even though we see that graph, Julia, where there's a skew now. We also know that there are groups that have a very different experience where there isn't that skew in your own group um, and that people uh, people's perspectives have been important to this movement for a long time. So I think we can say language like that when we're thinking of who is we, it already includes all of those people, which I think is a, is a good thing to remember. Um, I think, can you tell the, you mentioned once that someone had a similar response to people talking about uh, like, for, to people forgetting that that people had been in the room this whole time or people that had been involved in EA the whole time this whole time do you mind sharing that um well i guess i i got some feedback early on i wrote a blog post called uh, where are the women uh about just looking at the the numbers of say giving what we can members and other people that i uh some early uh early numbers from the EA community this was several years ago um and afterwards i heard from another uh, woman in EA who I didn't know at that time, but now is a good friend. Um, her re response was kind of like, well, what I'm here, you know, like don't, don't treat me as nothing. Uh, and I, I really don't want to make that mistake of acting like there are no people of color here or like women are not, you know, active or present in EA or that, um, that EA is monolingual or mononational or, or even just maybe tri-national or something. It's not like we're all Brits, Australians and, and Americans. Um, and, and that's increasingly the case. Um, you know, the number of EA groups in Asia, I think, has, has doubled uh, in the last two years. Um, so it is changing. And it do, and the, the demographics do vary quite a bit by location, by group. So um, obviously, the racial breakup um, of a group uh, is actually um, the United States is, is more skewed on both race and gender. Um, you know, farther different from its sort of overall national population than most other countries. So um, we Americans definitely have some work to do. Uh, Australia is doing quite a bit better on gender balance, uh, for example, uh, than is EA overall. Uh, so it is possible to do better and different, different groups have had different success. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm really curious to learn more about what is working in different places. So here's a technical question about how EA organizations might handle this. Anonymous asks, do all EA organizations de-identify resumes or curriculum vitae documents when hiring new people? Uh, I don't have like exhaustive knowledge of what all the uh, organizations in EA do. I know that CEA has gone through different stages where at times we have anonymized um, all you know, application materials for jobs. Uh, at other times, we haven't. Um, and again, I think the evidence on this is a little confusing. Uh, in some fields, it seems that anonymizing applications uh, improves the rate. The evidence I've seen is about women in particular. Um, in in some fields, it seems that uh, anonymization improves the rate of female hires in other fields. I think the example I saw was in the Australian civil service. Uh, it seems that anonymizing applications actually decreases the number of female hires. Uh, so I think it essentially might depend on the culture of the organization or the field and whether they are 
uh, whether they're actively looking for uh, more diverse candidates or whether like how strong discrimination is um, in play, basically. Um, so I do know that EA organizations are trying to learn about what the best practices are, what the data suggests uh, are, are actually best practices. Um, so I, I think there's a variety of practices out there, essentially. And I, I think the evidence uh, just isn't that clear about what's the best way to uh, be fair to candidates, to uh, overcome any barriers that might be present structurally, and uh, and to really build the kind of diverse workforce that we would really love to have. So I know the social science research on this is always difficult for those of you who are coming from the humanities. I'm sure we've all been frustrated by trying to ask questions that are really important to us um, and not being able to find really clear evidence. I think sometimes humanity just doesn't know the answer yet, um, but I'm glad that this community is persistent in trying to figure out these sorts of questions. So keep asking. I hope we'll keep seeing better evidence. Uh, and question comes from Jeffrey, who says, what are ways to incorporate diversity and inclusion into movement building? Oftentimes, it kind of feels like the extra thing that you add on to the end rather than a compliment that fits in with the overall strategy. I, I ad-libbed a bit your question, Jeffrey, but if you don't mind answering, Julia. Yeah, so I think you know, one area to think about this in is geography. Um, where are we funding groups? Uh, where are we supporting? Where are we holding conferences? Um, I think a lot of people have voiced that, you know, having online conferences over the last few months has been uh, just really a, a great way for people to connect who otherwise would have, you know, much more expensive plane tickets, for example, to get to a conference um, in the US or UK. Um, so I think like thinking about geography is is one way I think I, I know that a practice that um, the CEA thinks about in its events are, you know, who's represented in um, in presenting in MCs. Uh, I know we've um, really tried to, uh, you know, have have speakers who represent the the EA that um, is broader than you know what it was a few years ago, and um, and is continuing to to broaden. I hope. Um, Sky, did you have any other? thoughts about? Yeah, adding that in. So I think, um, and I hope I don't repeat you. Uh, I'm reading your questions as Julia is talking. So I can just add that we have been talking about this in um, recruitment and like the network building. Did you already cover that? Um, no. Can, can you Great. say yes. something about Wonderful. that? Wonderful. Um, so I think uh, one thing that Julia mentioned in her talk was that that graph, right, of kind of the preference, you can think of people's preferences for sameness also impacting sometimes just your social networks. So I think one thing that can be important to remember is that who you might know or who you might think of or who you might tap to work with you on a project or who you might ask what they need or what a strategy that worked for them would look like uh, might be pretty uh, heavily influenced by just who's already around, who you already have trust with, who it's easy to, to grab and who you already know will work with you on that. And the great thing about having uh, an international community um, and now having events like this is that you can expand your reach to people that might not um, have been available to you so easily before. So sometimes just building into your process, taking some extra time up front to think like, what would it look like to add a few more steps that actually would improve the whole project because it might appeal to people that we didn't think of or might give us ideas that we hadn't considered. And then it just results in being more inclusive. It also might mean uh, looking at your criteria, like if you happen to be doing a thing like a fellowship or hiring or uh, a program where you're you know, recruiting particular people to help you with different roles. So it can be useful to think through what are the different ways that you might demonstrate the same skill and make sure you're not just too narrowly focused on the ways that you're used to seeing people do that in your own field or in your own friend network. And so those are yeah, some off the top of my head ideas, but I'm also really happy to talk to people about this. And um, there's good literature on this that I'm reviewing with some advisors right now too. Another question is about uh, a different kind, it's about ideological diversity. So Jeffrey Miller asks, in a time of partisan polarization, how can EA, which maybe tends to be left-leaning, um, left-leaning in the US, I know left and right can be different in different countries, so how can left-leaning EA become more welcoming to political and ideological diversity and not just demographic diversity? Yeah, I think 
I know a lot of VAs who are pretty worried by political polarization and they think uh, that it's just possible to waste so much well-intentioned energy there uh, and that avoiding politicizing EA is important. And I think, um, uh, I know that I've seen that, for example, in like moderating uh, some of the online spaces, it's just um, this constant tension between people saying, like, well, this political thing is, is a really good opportunity to make a difference. Uh, and, you know, in, so, in some sense, they're, uh, they're making this impact driven uh, argument of, you know, well, this electing this candidate would be better for reasons X, Y, and Z. Uh, and I think while that, you, you can totally make that argument in, uh, in the short term. And I think politicizing the EA in the longer term just uh, has a lot of downsides. Um, so I think it's important I guess just the, the first uh, sort of bastion against like kind of losing a lot of the value of EA to politicization or, or, or polarization um, is maybe having separate spaces for those discussions. Um, you know, it's not to say that EAs can never talk about politics or never talk about um, views on uh on ways to address problems that include um, views that we, you know, see as very affiliated with, um, you know, one part of the political world or another. But I just think staying really mindful of the way that this has um, really eaten up so so much of um, of other movements' efforts um, is is kind of just like the first the first thing to keep in mind. Yeah, difficult questions. You know, the political polarization is quite the problem. Um, I So I wish we had more time to talk about all of these great questions that are still in Slack, are still in the list. I hope some of you will take them to Slack. I think we have time for two more um, that very quickly. So I think we have about three minutes. So Anonymous asks, when we think about diversity, how do we prioritize between like where we invest in different kinds of diversity given that we could talk about age, gender, race, nationality, first language, religion, political leanings, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I, I can see a couple different ways to um, kind of work on prioritizing these. Um, one is where are we now? Uh, like how, how far off from uh, sort of populations in general in the world are we? Um, and in, in some directions, we're like clearly much more skewed than others. Um, so I think certainly if you look at world population, um, race really stands out as an area where EA is very skewed um, from the population of the world in general. Uh, and even just in, in many countries where EA is already established, um, you know, still fairly off, off kilter, um, even compared to the national population. Uh, Another way to think about it is what's the impact that we're going for and what do we need to achieve that? I think that nationality seems especially important to me there. Um, I think the idea of a movement trying to address the world's problems um, that has such a slanted uh, population of, of constituents um, just doesn't really add up to me. Um, you know, it, it seems very likely that to address problems that are happening at a global level, um, you know, whether that's uh, artificial intelligence, which, you know, people in many countries are working to uh, develop or just has, has multiple sort of strong contenders, um, whether that's animal suffering, um, which just, you know, is, is different on the ground in different countries and different interventions are going to be uh, more or less applicable in different areas, and you need different skills to work on those in different areas. Um, just at any field that you're working in uh, really requires people from, uh, you know, not not just the U.S. and U.K., which is, has been the majority of, of EAs historically. So I think that's really an area where I would love to see EA grow because I think it's just uh, vital for impact. Yeah, I've really enjoyed my conversation with many um, uh, emerging with either established leaders in EA from different countries or uh, different backgrounds, people of color in the US and UK. Uh, 
and as well as emerging leaders and new groups that are starting. So I know uh, we're excited to get to know those folks and see how that uh, plays out in EA's impact in the world. And our last question to end on is, how can we nominate Julia to be president of everything? <laughs> are you running? <laughs> uh, oh boy, I need a vacation. Uh, <laughs> I so vouch well for that. After COVID. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I don't um, I need a break. <laughs> <laughs> I vouch for that. Julia is also an advocate of self-care right? And sustainable motivation. So I think we'll let her off the hook for this one. But thank you all for your questions and for joining us. Hopefully we'll see you soon in the icebreaker. Thank you.